Welcome back everybody, Mike here from Tactical Considerations. We're gonna be looking at a nice new optic in the way of the Micro Prism SLX 1X from Primary Arms. So if you don't know who Primary Arms is, they've been putting out some really nice, really durable, kind of wallet-friendly optics for the past several years. They've also been doing a lot of work when it comes to the reticles and the like projected dot designs between their ACCS Vulcan, which they teamed up with Holosun, and their ACSS Cyclops style reticles, which is what this has, it really just takes all the guesswork out of the game. Now, if you don't know what a prism optic is, you kind of have to think about it almost like an old school hunting scope. There is glass in here with that etched reticle. It's just a lot smaller. Or in the case of this micro prism, compared to this larger scope, a lot smaller. But there are some advantages and possibly some disadvantages depending on what you are looking to use this for, and I guess kind of what your skill level is as well. So the question gets asked, why would you want a prism style optic? And we're gonna talk about that because depending on your age or maybe if you were born with an eye issue like astigmatism, an etched reticle can be far more clear and far easier to use and you still get that usable illumination in red or green. Now, I know personally, Sometimes when I look through certain optics, it looks like a horror movie. I just see a big red splatter on that front glass. And that's just kind of something I've gotten used to over the years because I do have that astigmatism. Now, something like a prism with that etched reticle, not only is that etched reticle always there, but it can also appear far more clear to you than a lot of traditional projected red dots. And as I said, you still get that illumination in red or green, but a lot of times the holdback has been battery life. So. The primary arms micro prism here says that it'll give you 45,000 hours of usable illumination, which is pretty good because most red dots right now are about 50,000 hours. And a lot of other prism style optics out there don't have even half of that right now. Now, one of the holdbacks a lot of people have about prisms, especially when they're like 3X or 4X prism, is that eye relief. So on a traditional red dot, it doesn't matter whether your eye is like right here or way back here. As long as you're looking through that optic, and you can see that dot, you are going to be on and you are going to hit that target. Now, when you move into a prism, since there is that glass and etched reticle, there is generally an eye box. So if you don't know what the eye box is, it's kind of like the minimal distance, the maximum distance, and then that sweet spot kind of right in there where you get all of the view that you can get. I will say on this thing, they have done an amazing job with this glass because it doesn't matter whether I am right here or whether I am clear back here like that, They've almost given us unlimited eye relief within reason humanly possible when it comes to this micro prism. Now this specific optic has the new Cyclops Gen 2 ACSS reticle, which if you don't know, allows you to range and use the chevron in there and then the drop compensation points in there very quickly and very easily. Like I said, it takes all of the guesswork out of the game for you and just makes life super simple out there. So as you can see by this diagram, if you know those holds in there and where they're given with the given round you are using, whether it's 556, 308, whatever you are buying it calibrated for, it just makes life super easy. No in-head calculations, nothing like that. You range it, you figure it out, or you have a known distance and you just use those markings. I have mine mounted on my 13.9 Hunter from Cox Arms. I got a review up on this. Really cool rifle. They are local out here to me and they make very nice stuff, but it's a really good length in that 13.9 for kind of that medium, um, intermediate kind of use where you can reach out a little bit and you're still getting good ballistics, but you got the shortest thing possible with a pin and welded break up here. So you can still use this very easily in a car, in a house for some good training classes, but still reach out there when you want to test the limits of that ACSS reticle. And if you're interested in any of the stuff you see here today, I will leave the link in the description. It'll take you to my webpage where all that stuff is posted so you can check it out. Out on the range, this thing is super easy to use. You get it zeroed in and you just get to work out there having some fun. It is much the size of like a T1 Micro, kind of in that area, maybe like the Vortex Spark 2 Solar. And it has really smooth and clean lines all around the body of that optic. And the build quality seems to be extremely nice. Now I've only got a few hundred rounds for this thing, but Primary Arms has pretty much made a name for themselves making very durable optics. Now, engaging targets with this thing up close is super easy because it's just like a red dot, whether you have the illumination on or off, you just use the top of that chevron. Now, when you wanna reach out a little bit further, you go back to the manual, you remember those holdovers and distances that that chevron and drop compensation lines there since once you've ranged or whether it's a known distance. Having that huge eye relief on a prism is definitely nice and I'm really interested to try the 3X out 
because I want to see how they were able to expand the eye box on that as well because I've heard it's not quite as good, but it's still much better than many others. The design of the body of this thing is very nice. That tube almost has no hard edges besides the ocular and the objective ends of that. You're not really going to find a lot of 90 degree edges, maybe the activation button for illumination, but everywhere in the body where there would have been like a hard edge, they've really rounded it off and done a very nice job making it really smooth and snag free. Now the adjustments on there are going to be one MOA and they are exposed turrets. Some people like that. Some people don't like that. Honestly, I've never had one adjust on me, but that is kind of a concern depending on what you are doing with it. But overall, as far as the range performance and the design overall of this optic, I think they knocked it out of the park. All right, now for my people that need hashtag all the specs, I do it a little differently. I don't want to read every single thing to you because that can get boring. So I'm going to list them here, play that elevator music. You can pause it and read all that stuff, but I just go over the general basics rather than droning on and on. All right, let's take a quick look at what you're actually gonna get in the box for this thing besides obviously that optic. In the box, you're gonna get several different mounts for adjustments in height all the way up and over two inches. And the side of the box and the manual is gonna tell you what your combination is to achieve the appropriate height you are looking for. You're gonna get the battery, you'll get the manual, you'll get a book on the reticle and how to use that reticle. And you're gonna get some very nice lens caps and covers that you can kind of pull down and leave on the optic while you're using it. And you will get plenty of screws to make all of those different height mounts work. All right, so what are our big pros and cons here when it comes to that micro prism from Primary Arms? The biggest one's gonna be that size. You're basically mirroring the size of like a T1, H1, or H2 from Aimpoint, maybe the Vortex Spark 2 Solar. So it's a very tight and confined package. You're also getting big eye relief for a prism style optic. And like I said, I don't have the 3X, but I'm really gonna try to get that one in because if they've been able to expand a 3X in the eye box area, that is pretty cool. And that 45,000 hour battery life really starts to rival basic red dots out there, but you do get the advantages of having an etched reticle, which is there all the time. So if your battery dies and you're in daylight, you still have it. But if you're doing some cool night stuff, you still have 45,000 hours of usable illumination in red or green. And that last big pro is the lifetime warranty. So they're matching many of the other brands out there and ensuring that you have a quality optic for life should you break it out there on the range. All right, so what are the cons here? And I really only came up with one, and this might be a bit of nitpicking, but the adjustments are one MOA. So for me, you really can't get that perfect zero, um, maybe depending on how everything lines up with the mounts and your upper. But when you have one MOA adjustments, um, you just can't get it exactly perfect as if your adjustments were like half MOA or quarter MOA or something like that. And I know that may be asking a lot, especially at this price point, but I would have loved to have seen this in a half MOA adjustment version because much like some of the Vortex offerings now, you just can't really get it perfect. You're either a little bit left or just a little bit right, or maybe a little low or a little high when it comes to an MOA style adjustment. But again, that's gonna give us men of man out to quite a distance. And quite honestly, that's pretty much what we're all looking for. Now, knowing those pros and those cons, our price factor for this optic is coming in at 269. So based on the design, my experience on the range, the benefits of that warranty and the reticle system in here and that kind of primary arms brand name that is now very well respected. I think that's an absolute steal for an optic like this. You may differ from that, but think about the inflation that's gone on recently. Prices have been all over the place. I think that's just an absolute deal for an optic if you're looking into the prism game and you want something that's going to last you a very long time. But I am curious to know, do you like prism optics or are you forced to use them maybe because you have astigmatism or some of those aging eyes like myself? I'm curious to know down in the comments, what is your chosen prism brand? And I'm also really curious to know what your experience with primary arms is because I've tested a couple of them now that I'm making videos on and honestly, it's been pretty good. Well, that is what I've got for you all today. Make sure you get subbed up down below. Make sure you double check your subscription. I know there was a bunch of people that said they were unsubscribed and their bell notification wasn't working. Double check that stuff for me. I will leave all the links for everything you saw today in the video at my website or check that first link in the description. It will take you to where I can actually post all the links if you wanna pick any of that stuff up. You get out on the range, have some fun. Remember, if you stay ready, you ain't gotta get ready. I will see you all on the next one.